Hey everyone, massive episode for you today. We have on Shane Pace. Now Shane came to my attention as I saw a documentary on him where he was talking about his aspiring AFL journey. This man was training three, four hours every morning before school to try and make it into the AFL. Unfortunately, he didn't quite hit his dreams. He didn't have the growth spurt that he was hoping for, but this man, he is absolutely incredible. What he's been able to achieve into the fitness, wellness, and health space has been nothing short of amazing. He's built a brand on Instagram that's got over 1.6 million followers. He's a superstar working with AFL players, high-performance humans, as he calls them. He's got a supplement brand, a clothing brand. I just think he's a great guy that knows how to build a brand and really expose it and build something quite natural and organic with, with a lot of his following. This was a wonderful episode. We got quite a lot of insight into the gym industry, also into how to be a high performance human and to get motivated and get back in the gym. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. As I always say, if you are new here, thank you for turning up. And if you've come back again, I absolutely love you. Uh, big year. We always say it at the start of every episode. I thank you guys for supporting the initial shows that we've had this year. We still have merch running around. I know I'm wearing the, uh, humanized tea here, but there is still merch in the bio. Get down there, check it out. We've got the white, uh, smiley tea, the humanized tea. We've got the hat still going. Um, and also today we have a very special guest who funnily enough has, um, been following the podcast for, for, I think around a year he ma- he mentioned, but um, this is a man I associate with uh, the mastery of building a brand um, and and also maintaining high performance through uh, probably over 20 years of his life, which is uh, when I really, when I say high performance, I really fucking mean it. So you will find a bit more about this man today, which hopefully can give you guys some inspiration to take that into your own life. But nonetheless, Shane Pace, welcome to the Unlaced Podcast, bro. Thanks for having me, Jakey. Uh, it's uh, it's funny. I have been following it for a bit over a year. You did ghost me. But, uh, <laughs> did I ghost you? <laughs> then randomly, you're just like, hey, bro, I didn't even know you followed me. <laughs> oh, bro, I don't know. We get a lot of messages. Actually, I try and do oh, respond bro. to all the messages as well. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm sorry if I nah, did, bro. It's all good. Uh, mate, what a show. I love it. Oh, thank and you, I'm hooked bro. on it. And I've probably watched, I reckon I've watched at least 20 shows. And, and, and you know what? I wanted to learn a bit about yourself and- you know how funny it is, how similar our upbringing is? It's it's ridiculous. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you obviously, you played for Australia. I didn't do that. But um, it's funny that the hurdles you went through, the height you went through through your juniors, and then it's funny, man, because you don't talk about it often, and I think yeah. I think you should talk about it a bit more. Well, I'm trying to now. I don't know. Braden, yeah. am I talking about it enough? Uh, so, so I don't know. Well, I just, cause I feel like it's the same story. So, yeah. I, I mean, I think I try and lean on the experience with people and talk to them about what they're like mm. them and then use my experience to like match them, I guess. But I don't talk, I guess I've, I don't really speak about my own. It resonates with me anyway. Yeah. Man, well, so, that's cool. Yeah. Well, let's, we should go into that because, um, for those, I mean, like the, the first thing that caught me off guard, I was like, who's this guy following my page with like 1.6 million followers on Instagram? So naturally that I'll be straight up that gravitates my page. But then it was like, um, pretty much what you were putting out there. I was like, Oh, this guy's like, his mentality is seriously elite. And then your, your mantra and your brand is be elite. So I was like, I started looking into you a little bit more and that's why I want to get you on the podcast. But before we get into the now and the, the work you're doing, you, from your point, you wanted to be a footy player. Yeah. And you, you were a pretty good footy player too, right? You were playing for like for like Vic Metro and yeah, stuff, weren't you? Yeah, I was you? all right. Yeah, I guess I did all of that. I, I squeezed blood out of a rock at a young age. So <laughs> I started footy pretty late. Um, I didn't I didn't know I was going to be any good. I was pretty – I wasn't – I didn't think I was small until I was probably 14, 15. Obviously, I'm a shorter statured guy, but I was like a man child oh, up really? until probably the age of 13, 14, and then kids started catching up. So um, I didn't start footy till the age of 12. I was actually turning 13. And so my friends had already had probably 100 games under their belt and I hadn't even played yet. So, yeah, I, I had a pretty good junior career, I would say. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. We, we have to – we'll break it down a bit more because I think it's a, quite a catalyst for um, who you became because similar to what we said earlier, uh, similar to our stories or our thing, it's like that – disappointment of like attaining a goal, but I reckon, the, I don't know, and I could be different, but the way um, you sort of operate, and I do want to go into sort of your earlier days of your routine and stuff that we've spoken about before, which for me is fucking crazily intense. Um, but the level of sacrifice that you gave to, uh, I don't know if it was associated towards footy, 
but um, keen to know that. But is the level of sacrifice I associate with like Tiger Woods and Serena Williams <laughs> as like kids? Yeah. Like, do when you think about what you're doing, right? I guess so. I can, just, can you explain to the listeners, I guess, like what a, when when what I'm talking about started, what age, why, and what you were doing? Yeah, I, look, it, w- it was always associated with footy. So I would say, just just like any other kid, if if you don't have sport, I say sport teaches you so many lessons in life, especially as a kid. Um, it gives you like it obviously gives you discipline, right? Mm. So up until probably the age of grade six, I would have been. I would have been considered as probably the baddest kid in my school. Right? So <laughs> I was trying to steal cars in grade six and <laughs> trying to pick up girls. And I was just that kid, just that I was always respectful to my elders. But when it was amongst the crowd, I was just, I, I just did, I didn't have any direction. Yeah. And um, I didn't play a sport. I was just, I was very, um, I was gifted. I was, I went from, what's funny here is, Grade three, four, and five, I can vividly remember my dad trying to put me into soccer and I just was no good at it. Yeah. I was terrible. Um, I was I was just into video games and watching TV and I was just not a sporty kid. And then, I don't know, probably around grade five, I started developing. I was, a, I was an early developer, so I was probably already starting to go through puberty in grade five and I just felt stronger than other kids and, and started to feel a little bit quicker and – we start doing a little bit of inter-school sports and I just started feeling like I was dominating, like if we did like athletics mm. or, um, you know, if we if we played inter-school footy, I wasn't the best player in the school at that stage. I was probably, you know, probably in the top five or ten, but I was like, well, these guys play footy and I don't. So um, they're not far much more better so than you me. You just have natural ability. In a it sense. just came. I, I don't know how it happened. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah, but, but you do. Sometimes you have natural ability, which gravitates you to something. Yeah, you know? I think what happened was what got me really interested in it is my uncle. Um, he barracked for North Melbourne, and in the in the mid nineties, North Melbourne was a powerhouse. Best, right, and um, he didn't just barrack for him. He was a part of the committee. So I um, I used to go to training with him, and I'd be in the change rooms kicking the footy with Anthony Stevens, Wayne Carey, Shannon Grant was a, as a close family friend of my uncle. So. I was always around footy and I thought, all right, well, I'm going to play. And I kept asking my dad in grade six, can I play footy? It's like, oh, you play footy. He was like, no way. It's like, <laughs> you, you won't stick to it. You don't stick to anything. And, you know, he wasn't wrong because everything he put me in, I just, I'd let him down. You know, I'd just be like, fuck, I'm just, I just, I'm over it, dad. I don't want to play anymore or whatever. And anyway, grade six came and we played school footy and I said, come and watch me play. I, I, I kicked 10 goals last week. And he's like, no way you kicked 10. I'm like, I kicked 10. Come and watch me. So they came and watched me and I kicked 14 this week. <laughs> oh, I was playing shit. out of the midfield and it was just like, I felt like bloody dusty. I can remember that game. It was in grade six. We were playing against a school called Resurrection. And uh, I was just fending kids off and just, it was centre bounce, tap, fend off, goal, right? And then my school teacher went to my dad and he said, I think you should put him into footy because yeah. he's probably one of the best junior footballers I've seen and he doesn't even play footy. Well, that's crazy. So um, anyway, mind you, my, one of my best mates, Michael Rishitali, who he'll watch this, and um, he he was one of my good mates at school at the time and he was like an absolute freak. You yeah. know, he was like the standout he at our school. He had a great career. Yeah, he did. And, yeah. and you know what? He, again, we'll go to him and, and what I think – longevity in an athlete and why, and, and why you see these high end athletes don't make it so far. And then you have that disciplined athlete. That's nice. just average. <laughs> go the, de- go the <laughs> test of time. But uh, anyway, I've got a fucking, got yeah. a PhD in that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I ended up, I ended up starting footy the year after it would have been about 1997. And I, I played B grade footy and I didn't know, I didn't know what A grade club was or B grade or whatever. I just went to the local club around the corner, which was our Auburn Vale footy club. And then, Mate, within within a year or two, I was dominating it. Like it's, I was taking the absolute piss. And then um, I had a lot of A grade clubs saying, "Come and play for us." And anyway, I went to go play for Altona. Um, I seen you played for the Altona Magic. Yeah, mate. Altona Magic. <laughs> so yeah. just down the road, uh, <laughs> behind Cherry Lake, there there's uh, the Altona Vikings Football Club. Where then I ended up going there, and and then yeah, I guess the rest is his, history. I, I played Vic Metro. I've won. Three league BNFs, team of the year. I've squeezed blood out of a rock for for a young kid. I mean, um, 
junior footy under 16s, I, I think I won the league BNF that year and kicked 82 goals playing on ball. And it was A grade. So, well, whose age group were you in? Like, who's, who's, which players are you playing with? My against? draft, my draft year. So, when I played Vic Metro, I was with Joe Watson. Um, oh, okay. Steve Salapek got drafted that year. Brendan Goddard. I oh, said, so um, Brendan Goddard went number one. Pick one that yeah. year. But he went pick one the year before. So, he got picked up as he had another year of under 18s. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah so, that's, that's my age. The best footballer I've seen, I don't know if you've heard who he is, but. I mean, I'm sure your mates know who he is, but Chris Gourlay was my age group. John yeah. Coleman's grandson. Yeah. The absolute best player of all time I've ever seen that yeah. didn't get drafted. And um, he, he was my age and um, Essendon were trying to hide him until, you know, I don't know what happened there, why he didn't get picked up. But again, yeah, my footy ended at some point. I stopped growing. And I, I, at some point there I used it as a bit of a cop out mm. um, because, you know, you make Vic Metro and then, I got to Jets 18s, made the list the first year, and then the second year at my top age where you think you're going to make it because you're older than everyone. Yeah, they just said, mate, happen. we're not even going to give you a pre-season. Yeah. Um, at least give me a pre-season, give me a gig. So um, they didn't do that, and I was disappointed, obviously. Um, it hit me pretty hard because going back to your question earlier, I don't know if I'm answering it properly, but – No, I yeah, want you to tell people your routine, daily did, routine. routine. Yeah, because so, like to, you've gone to the achievements first, yeah, but the, the achievements, the achievements is like – a byproduct of this because what I and what what I've found out about you, it, I think, is borderline. It is insane <laughs> what you were doing. Yeah, well, I guess you can't win those achievements without working harder than everyone because I was I wasn't gifted, man. I was definitely not a gifted footballer. I was a gifted athlete, so oh, yeah. I was I was quick. I had really good endurance, but but I would get up at four in the morning, five in the morning. And at like, what age? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. So. My dad said something to me once when I was younger, and it just stayed in my head. If if you want to be the best at something, you got to work before everyone's awake, right? Mm. And um, I was like, I didn't know what that meant because I like to sleep in. I'm not a morning person. I'm still not. And um, anyway, so I'd get up at like 4 a.m. and it just felt like ass. Like I'd wake up and I'd, I'd just be like, oh, it's still dark. Like, yeah. What am I doing? And anyway, I'd get a hoodie on and um, I'd run for an hour. And then I'd come home by five o'clock and um, sometimes like dad would be up for work and I'd be like, can you drive me to the pool? Mm. And he'd be like, you just, <laughs> just, I'm not just ran for an hour. Pool, just ran for an hour. And then, um, you know, I'd, he'd drive me to the pool. I'd like twist his arm. He'd drive me to the pool and he's like, how are you getting home? And I'd be like, it's all right, I'll dry up or run home. And the pool was 5Ks from home. And so I'd, I'd try to like almost – do like a duathlon or triathlon before work, before school sometimes. 14. And then I'd go to school and obviously school suffered a little bit. Yeah. Um, You'd been exhausted by exhausted. the second class, man. Exhausted, man. And and then what ended up happening as I got a little older, <clears throat> that routine stayed. And look, it, it really it really set me up for footy because I just felt way more fitter than kids. Like yeah. They're jogging a lap and they're tired. And I'm like, how can you be tired with a jog? Mm. Like, you know, and I'm, I'm doing 400s. I've done eight 400s before this session, you know, mm. and, you know, I was overtraining. I had no education on, you know, there was no one pulling the reins in. It was just like I was getting groin injuries at 14, 15 that you shouldn't be getting at that age, you know, yeah. a, a bit of OP and all of that. So anyway, um, what ended up making it even worse is I had a good friend of mine who he was riding to his soccer as well and then he'd, he'd wake up in the morning and, and do it with me and then it become competitive and he was elite. Yeah, because this like, was going on for like, it wasn't like a one or two uh, weeks. It was three, just, four years. Yeah, it was like three every day yeah. in the morning. Yeah, I mean the odd You're doing time, a three-hour session before school. Yeah, I mean the odd, odd morning I'd wake up and go, oh, fuck that, man, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, Like, of course, I wasn't perfect. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think those, you know – what what really hurt me when I didn't make, you know, obviously the 18 squad at Jets was all that work I'd put in. Mm. I actually was like, fuck, like, is this a waste? Like, what did I do? Like, why did I do all of that? Like, And then this happened to me and there was a time there I would look at myself and bloody hate myself because mm. I'm like, why the hell did I have to be this size? Like, why did why was I given this skill set? Mm. But 
than this this size? Like what's what's it supposed to teach me? So I was pretty in tune with my emotions at a young age. Yeah. Like I don't know if any other kid that age asks himself that those no. questions. What were, what was but, your like, out of curiosity, what was like your answer to yourself with that? I couldn't answer it. You I, couldn't I, answer. I can now. Yo, yeah, can yeah, you now? I can yeah, now. Yeah, like like just purely not about the why of why I'm this oh fuck man, you're born with what you're born with. Yeah, like you know? but, but for me it's more I understand why I didn't get chosen. Like one, I wasn't good enough. Like, like in the it, end, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was no Caleb Daniel. Let me tell you that. Yeah, like that, and that guy's not much taller than me, and he's an absolute freak. I didn't move like that. He's taller than people think, you know. I've been near him. Like he's he's Why, man. He's not too far off me, and I'm like, I he looks tiny yeah, on the footy field. I mean, but he's a lot taller than me. Everyone's a lot taller than me. Yeah, but, but he's, <laughs> he's deceptively bigger. Though, I will say. But if you're not going to be that good, you're not getting picked up. No, nah, right? yeah, especially correct. at 169 centimeters. That he is like I'm yeah. 163, man. Yeah. So I'm like Tony Liberatore. Like, <laughs> so you've got to be, you're going to be a generational talent to yeah. make it. It's like, mate, why would you pick a guy that's five foot four if the guy that's five foot ten or six foot or six one runs as quick as you? Yeah, he's as strong as you, if not stronger and better in the air. And, and if his skills aren't as good, we can teach it. It's all good. So I understand that now. I wouldn't pick me if I was me. Not really. Then I wouldn't. Like, it's just the nature of it. You so know? you've made peace. I've made peace. With yeah. It. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, of course, when we talk about what you're doing now, I mean, there's no doubt you've made peace. But would you, I just want to know, like, obviously physically it's quite evident what you would have got out of that yeah. sort of insane work levels. And even though you, you, you hit heights, you didn't get to where you wanted to go. But mentally, like, what did you, do you think you've got stuff out of working that way? even till now, like, do you know what I mean? Like there's, you've, you've got an advance on yeah, I've, on life in a sense or like, you know, that, that stuff's got to be good for you. It's mental fitness, man. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. We, everyone talks about mental health and, you know, you got to check your mental health and you got to, you got to be weary of all that, those things. But I think it's just like anything, if you don't build your mental fitness, then mm. you're not going to go the test of time. Yeah. You know, you're going to have lapses in there where mentally you're not going to be strong enough. So it just makes sense to, you know, from a young age, I had a fair bit of disappointment, but I had a fair lot of discipline to push through that adversity. Correct. That's and and my, my actual, my actual start of footy was all adversity, always you're the shorter guy, you're the mm. small guy. So it was always back to the wall mentality. When I made Vic Metro, I remember a selector saying, hey, you know, you're the, the smallest guy picked in 60 years. And I'm like, Fuck, really? I don't know whether That's to take that as a compliment. Or, put down, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, cool, no worries. And then there was another guy in the team that was one of the tallest. He was 205 centimetres at 16. So Jesus. I was like, wow, he got drafted to Sydney, Andrew Erickson. So but he never got a game. I take those... I take those early learnings and, and failures in life. Mm. And there was a point in my life where I, ha I had a previous gym and, and maybe we'll touch on that, mm. but that that went to shit. Obviously I had a few business partners, dynamic wasn't good and, and we mm. had to part ways and I lost everything, man. I lost the property. I lost about $200,000 in cash. Um, I had to restart my business again and pretty much reinvent myself mm. and – I, I was, in, it was in that point of time where it was pretty hard. It was tough. And I thought, when have I been in this hard situation in my life before when my back was to the wall? And I always resort everything back to footy when I was younger because it was always back to the wall. It was always that like dog-like mentality I had. Chip on your shoulder. Yeah, prove always. something wrong. Always. Yeah. And, and I thought I was always trying to prove something, someone wrong. But I was always trying to prove myself right <laughs> yeah. in a way. Yeah, so, yeah well, that's just – but that usually – I guess that sometimes that doubt is what, what sort of pushes you on. Yeah. Isn't 100%. it? And that self doubt for me, um, gives me self belief. If that makes sense. Cause you kind of start to maybe believe what other people are saying. Yeah. So you got to prove it to yourself. Then, yeah. then you can fucking show everyone else, exactly. you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's, it's interesting bro. Yeah. I mean, for me, yeah, it was, it's just a, it was just that moment in time. I've used that tool of when I was young. I still use it now. Like I what, working out, do you mean? Like no, nah, like nah, business, a business. business right. So like for me, like, you know, the, the biggest thing in my life, obviously outside of my family and my wife and kids is my business, right? Mm. So it pretty much when you have a business with as many moving parts in it as mine does, it revolves around your whole life. Like mm. you get a clothing line, you've got, um, you know, supplement line, you've got a gym and you've got, 
you know, we've got hundreds of online clients as well, not just people that come in the gym. So there's bills that come in and out, man. You, mm. You're dealing with adversity every day. You're mm. getting a bloody twenty, thirty thousand dollar bill on your bloody doorstep, and you're like, oh, "What's okay, true? I didn't expect that." That's true. Right. So yeah. how do you deal with it? Okay, you just make it happen. So I think I think what footy, footy two things it taught me to lead and it taught me how to be led as well. Yeah. So there were two things there now that in, in that space of trying to be a leader, I know how to adapt to both yeah. and it's given me, I don't know, just given me more resilience, I guess. Yeah. It's, you know? it's a lot of, you're spot on, man. We speak about it on here all the time, the benefits athletes get transitioning to the business space. If there's kind of this acceptance and emotional capacity to like yeah. let go a little bit of the past and, and yeah. kind of realize the skill sets um, that you have, I, I kind of probably want to go a little bit into your business operation and, and pick your brain a little bit as well. And like the AFL environments too. But, um, for those that like, obviously don't know your, your sort of setup now, you're obviously a, a gym owner. You've got a, a whole bunch of sort of subsidiary brands underneath, underneath it or within it as well. But you've been creating content for a long time, which is yeah. what I want to get into, which kind of came before any of this, right? And this is why I want to speak about like building a brand because I think it's quite important for all the listeners out there, any kind of job you do, it doesn't matter what you do, you can actually build a brand off it um, yeah. through social media and, and whether you monetize it or not or just allow yourself to create some more opportunities is, is pretty pretty cool. But you, when did you start this journey from the social media aspect? Because you've been pretty consistent for a while. Oh, yeah, it was 2014. I think if you scroll That's right That's early back to on the bottom, IG, bro. Yeah. That's like two years in. It was like, because you know what happened? This, I had another gym. It was called Strong Life and it, it had an altitude room. So it was kind of ahead of its time. And so you'd come in, you'd have your just your normal gym access and then you walk in there and you see Essendon players training in there because Essendon didn't have an altitude room. So it mm -hmm. popped off quick. It's like- Oh, far right. He's got Essendon Footy Club at his gym. Oh, every other footy club, soccer club in the area Damn. wanted to come. So it was pretty cool. I had like 700 odd members, but the dynamic of my business partners, it was absolutely cooked. Like yeah. one, one guy was an investor, obviously had me being the face of it and the, and the motor. And then you had a guy, there's always that guy that tags along, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And them two were butting heads. And I was looking at, Dude, I've got to get out of this. Like I was talking to myself every day about it. I'm like, this is a ticking time bomb. What am I going to do to to grow this, either either grow this business or me get out and grow myself? I thought, well, online is looking like the go. It's starting to pop off. Um, I still think that's pretty early though, man, early. For, to capture that in the mind. Oh, well, I was just seeing a YouTube lot of was kind of still nothing. in its infancy yeah. then, you know? Yeah, I didn't even, I, I had one YouTube video up at that stage of me training a little highlight reel. Yeah. Um, but I started with this concept of I'm going to try build me as a brand so people want to see where I train. And it was probably the wrong way to go about it. And my the investor business partner, he wasn't he wasn't quite happy about it. So obviously to cut what, it. Because you were creating your you're yeah. pushing your own material. Yeah, and I was like only doing it to bring That's people. Stupid. Yeah, I was bring, <laughs> trying to bring people in. It's only only way I knew how. I was just yeah. starting out. So I didn't really delve into all the intricacies of this is how you should do it and this is how you build a brand. I was building myself. There would be nothing wrong with that approach now though, because I no. feel like that's like good for the business. Well, we've kind of putting, done that. Um, putting yourself out there, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess if you want to build a brand and you don't, you don't want yourself to be the brand, then you build the business's brand instead of your uh, face. Ah, okay. So right, you I would get, kind of quite, actually. Yeah, I get what he was, what he was upset about, but it wasn't my intention. I don't. I, don't, I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't agree with it. I don't, it wasn't my intention. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't my intention. So anyway. I, um, you know, part of ways with that business and I thought, all right, I'm, I'm rolling here, mm. right? Um, let's, let's do this. And so there was a guy and I always love to mention him because I wouldn't be where I am on my socials if it wasn't for him. He was just a guy at my gym, a, a member, and he's like, I heard you left the gym and he's like, I'm happy to help you if you want to build your social media. I, I started, you know, I'm seeing you post lately and, and you're posting some good content. I think you can be something, man. And he's like, do you want to do like fitness videos and training videos? And I'm like, yeah, hundred percent. I just don't know how to go about it. I don't know how to edit this shit. I don't mm. know. Like, yeah. It was like GoPros and stuff <laughs> yeah. back then. That was the big shit. Oh, man. really? Yeah. So anyway, um, 
so this guy, Andy, who's now one of my best mates, right? Uh, we've been mates for, I think now it's been almost 10 years. He did all my YouTube videos early on. We did like, I think a series that had like 15 YouTube videos and it, and it popped off. It was good. And he was doing little, little videos for me on Instagram and it was, it was going really well. And just year by year, we just evolved and evolved. And obviously I seen the importance of paying like videographers and photographers and quality oh, like from word content, go. not just content, but like the actual, yeah, yeah. the cameras you were using, the yeah. editing you were doing. Yeah. It makes it a big difference. Huge. Especially back then. I think right now it doesn't matter as much. Yeah. Well as now it it's did. just like, it's what you, how quick you can post shit and 100%. be first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just constantly rinse and repeat. But and back be then, consistent. Yeah. I, look, I was consistent then. I was posting twice a day from 2015, I would say. So, and then there was a little lull there where I didn't post for a while, but I really, I really seen traction with, with my social media, probably 17 mm. and then 2019's when it really, and then COVID was like, fucking yeah, boom. yeah, yeah. Oh, special. Yeah. Yeah. So when you came, when you came out of, um, I guess the footy mindset, yeah. it's quite funny cause I did watch a documentary on you and I know you I think your mate, you had me having a bit of banter. I don't know how real it was, but he said you were a terrible sparky. <laughs> <laughs> so he did, you were a sparky for like four or five years and yeah. then this whole sort of fitness world, which kind of you were already living, right? When yeah. we, If we're speaking about it now, it's actually freaking no-brainer yeah. because you were what you embody now through a business as such is how you were living from like 14 years old in yeah, a sense. Pretty much. But can you just take us through that period of life? Because I, I kind of do want to get into like how, how cool some of the stuff is you're doing now. Yeah, well, he's not wrong. <laughs> I, I was, I think, I wasn't that bad of a sparky. Yeah, it's <laughs> but pretty I funny how he said it. <laughs> I finished. Look, yeah, it, it, like you said, it's a no-brainer because people only know me for footy or lifting weights or any. Like I, I was the only kid in my footy team lifting weights. Like, right. and I didn't know if I was lifting right. We didn't have access then, like we do now, to like if if we had access to a me then. Mm. then I would have been sweet. My dad would have invested in that 100% just because right. he knew how dedicated I was and I wouldn't waste his money or his time. Yep. And uh, anyway, so I finished school and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I was just like, far out, what, what am I going to do? I'll, I'll go do a degree in exercise science and legit my dad was like, nah, you're doing a trade. And I'm like, oh, my enter school was good enough to get in and I got in and he's like, nah, nah, you're doing you're doing a trade. Like, what are you going to do that fitness shit for? All right. And, and, mate, my dad support me for everything, man. Like, so by all means, he'll probably watch this and I'm not <laughs> <laughs> talking you down. But was it Was it also, was it pretty early in that industry to be it was throwing all your upon. eggs in yeah, one was, basket, right? It was frowned upon. Like you, even AFL teams and stuff, there wasn't necessarily like nah, sports science units. Nah, and nothing like that. High performance stuff. There was like a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, man. And, do you and know and what I mean? Look, in, in his defense, I had no direction either. I didn't know. I was umming and ahhing about doing it. So he's yeah. like, do a trade. You're going to be a sparky. I'm like, whatever, I'll just listen to my dad. I'm living under his roof. Mm. So I went and done it. <clears throat> hated it, man. Like, absolutely hated it. I was lucky that my boss that I had was absolute, he was a legend. Like, absolute legend. He, he really understood even because he loved sport. He was into soccer, like, really big. He sent his son overseas and, and mm. all of that. So um, he understood my dedication for footy. And he was a little bit not surprised when when I said, look, I'm, I'm going to stop this and I did, I did my time. I finished my apprenticeship. And then when I said, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be PT, he was like, oh, that doesn't really surprise me. You know, like it's, it's what you're built for, you know, you're good mm. with people. And he was always, he would send me to, to jobs where big site managers like ask for me to go there because I get along with them and it, potentially it might've been me being able to like adapt to a lot of different personalities. And I'm like, well, other than the fitness stuff, I feel like I could be really good at this because mm. I understand people. Have you already, did you already have a platform at this point nah, as well? Nah, so nah. you, this is like platform was, came second there was just, after the there decision. There was MySpace here, oh. man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a damn. There was right. no Facebook This is before out. Christ. <laughs> yeah, mate. So, um, yeah, so I didn't even know nothing <laughs> about. Um, yeah, right, or, so this is early. This, this is, is early. So this is a big decision. Yeah, so. Stopped being a sparky, uh, went and studied obviously to be a PT. Uh, that took me about six months. And then I just started working out of, it used, they used to be called Phoenix fitness clubs. Um, good life bought them all out now. 
But um, went and worked there at Water Gardens and there was, well, there would have been 40 trainers there. Mm. So you go in, you pay your rent and, um, mate, you're fighting amongst 40 trainers. So, you know, by this stage, I haven't been a Sparky for like 12 months. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I become the busiest trainer in there after about three or four months. And it was just like, who the hell is this guy? What What is he? He's taken my clients. And I'm like, I literally, honestly, I went in there like a wrecking ball and I'm like, I'm just going to just clean this joint up. It's got 4,000 members. Like Damn. as if I can't fill my books up straight yeah. away. Yeah. So how I filled my books up, like I was actually starting to coach trainers there. So oh, they right. were like, oh, can you get me into shape? Because they were out of shape, you know, yeah. and back then every every person and their dog was getting their bloody PT cert. Yeah, and yeah. so they just want to be PT and they realise it's Because actually- it, was, it, was rel- it, was it wasn't easy, but it was easier to get. What yeah. was it, cert three and four in fitness yeah, or whatever? that's it. Like, that, you so didn't need much credentials. I just missed out on the, on the little government grant, oh, right? right? The government was giving away, like, just, I think you pay like five, six hundred bucks and you get your PT certs, but- I literally paid like the full amount, like three months before they bought that grant out. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> um, I went in there and and I just thought I just practice what I preach, like I always do. I guess members would see my dedication and dedication to my clients, and and at the same time, I didn't care about spending forty minutes with someone not getting paid for it. You know, like every, I think the problem with anyone in society now is they want to get paid straight away. They want to make it to the top straight away and everyone's entitled. And and so I went in there with the mentality of if I can get in front of 4,000 faces, mm. then why wouldn't I be able to put on at least like 50 of those clients? Like if you can't, you're kidding yourself. You don't belong. Mm. You don't belong in the industry. So I got to the point where I was like, far out, I need to hire another coach under me. Um, because I was kind of like, fuck, it's going to get to a point where I'm like waking up at 5 a.m. I was starting at 6. So I could have started earlier if I wanted to, but I qu- kind of drew the line. At that's like, your crazy mentality. Yeah. <laughs> 6 is pretty early, bro. Dude, that's a sleeping <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'd work up until like 11 o'clock, have a break, start again at 4, work till 9 or 10 at night. And that mm-hmm. was just the, the crap PT life that it is. Um, and then, yeah, I did that for years on end. And... Like I said, man, like from being a Sparky into that was a massive life transition, like yeah. huge, bro. Hey, Legends, just a quick pause in this episode to let you know about our partners of the show. We've been partnering with a wonderful brand called Organic Reflection. I love partnering with uh, local Australian brands. This was founded by two best friends in Melbourne who have a shared passion for health and wellness, and the company's mission is to enhance the well-being of the community at large. This is their flagship product, their Carbon 60 product. It's a unique blend, and it's proudly developed and ethically produced in Australia. Now, the benefit of this is you just do a few mils in your mouth. You take it orally on your tongue. Um, and it helps enhance your mood and cognitive function. It improves your mental performance, things like learning and memory. Uh, It helps reduce risk of various diseases, uh, reducing inflammation, which is a leading cause in cancer. And also for the athletes out there, um, it helps with uh, reducing uh, a lot of things around injury as well. So uh, strengthening cartilage, improving bone health, slowing fat cell growth, Um, and also reducing skeletal and muscle fatigue, which will help accelerate injury recovery. So a great one for all the athletes out there. Uh, They also do have a herbal tea, anti-aging. I think take the hint, Jake, they were trying to tell me. Um, But nonetheless, it is a great brand doing great things. Their link is in the bio below. Get on there, get some products and start feeling healthier in 2024. Also, you guys will know that I've been working with Dabble. Uh, the gambling agency for a number of years now. They've been a wonderful partner of the show. Uh, We're doing something special with them. We've we've opened up the streaming industry um, in the gambling space in Australia. If you guys are into this space, head on to Dabble. The link is below in the bio. I'm running a show, a stream there, Jake's Take, every Wednesday, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. within the app. It's a wonderful place. Uh, We dabble socially. We gamble responsibly. Only bet what you're willing to lose, please. But come along, have some fun. It's a big song and dance, and we talk a lot about sport, which is even more interesting. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. More importantly, let's get back into the episode. So then how did you how did you come into one working in the industry, being a PT to being a business owner? Yeah. And leveraging like obviously the platform that you'd gradually developed and built to yeah. kind of monetize everything you're doing as well with yeah. all your expertise. It's funny you say that. And and I've not thought about it until you, you asked me that question. <laughs> I had a PT manager at the gym. His name was Travis. Yeah. He was really good. He was cool, man. Like this guy like seen my potential straight away 
And he was just like, he would pull me aside, we'd have our one-on-ones and he'd be like, you know, you're like, you know, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, you know, like you're ahead of the rest. And I'm like, no, I don't see myself like that, but all right. And he's like, I'm going to give you a few more tips. Stop being a personal trainer and start being a business owner. Yeah. And that I'm frame like, of mind, right? yeah, and I'm like, fuck, I didn't, I didn't think about that, man. I'm like, what, what do you, what do you mean by that? And he's like, well, start running it as a business. He goes, you should probably start thinking about putting a coach under yourself. In his head, he was thinking more rent for me, more commission. But at the same time, it was giving me really good advice and, and where I was going in the trajectory went fast, pretty quick. So then I started thinking that business sort of mentality, I always kind of had that sort of hustle mentality, but it was just really erratic and yeah. it wasn't really Channel. structured or anything. Yeah. So, um, I ended up leaving there and I ended up saying, well, you know what? I can set, set a gym up from home and um, it sounds funny, man, but I spent like a hundred grand at home and like just deck this joint out, hammer strength, like fitness <laughs> equipment. You know, I'm not going to do anything half. Yeah, so yeah, I went yeah. all out and you would walk into my garage and I had another room on the side and you wouldn't even think you're training out of someone's house. Like oh, really? Com- fully full commercial oh, right. and um, decked it out. And I worked out of there for the next couple of years until I opened that other gym that, okay. that went a bit south. Yep. And um, when that went south, I went back to work from home again. It was already all set up and ready to go, you yep. know. So um, that business mentality, it, it swayed, man. It went up and down, up and down because I, f- I think a true business mentality mindset, it's not you really working in the business on the tools all day long. You're the man that's supposed to grow the business and have everyone else under you thrive. Yeah. And, and I was always worried about that. I had had a little bit of key man syndrome, I mm. think, and then still at times I still have that a little bit. Um, to part ways with that is hard, man. Is that What does that mean? Does that mean you're just like letting others flourish yeah. in your business to kind of – Yeah, it's not – Like kind of removing yourself from yeah, everything and I letting the so. business operate in a sense? Yeah, a little bit of a micromanager yeah, to a sense. Bro. Yeah, it's that's hard, hard though. Because like it's something you've worked out It's because you're life. probably quite – I don't know I don't know if intense is the right word, but because you're quite um, you're quite a perfectionist, like high yeah. performance is yeah. – I think you said this to me when I, when I asked about your gym. Um, which you'll probably go into a little bit, but you like yeah. working with high performance humans. Yeah. So if you don't see people at your level, then you're going to kind of <laughs> try and compensate for their, you know. Oh, uh, more or less. Like I get recently, uh, maybe the last twelve months, I've gotten a lot of like high performance people come in, mm. and I hate to categorize it, but it's true. Like some of these, I people, think it's a great saying. Like, high like, performance. Well, yeah, some high of these guys. Humans. Yeah, we we want to understand how this guy got their net worth to a hundred mil or how, how did you do that? I want to, I want to be around that. Yeah. Not that I want to be worth a hundred mil. I want to know how you performed at that level. You were still able to keep your family intact mm. and you've got everything else in your life intact and you seem, seem happy mm. and I ask you questions and you're like, yeah, it was all worth it. So I want to understand that. And that's the type of client I'd like around me yeah. and it stimulates me yeah. and pretty much all the, like I'm still coaching, man. So yeah. I shouldn't be, but I am. And pretty much all the clients I have around me are because they stimulate me, you know, and I'm learning a bit off them. A lot of business owners, a lot of successful people. Um, and not, not say I wouldn't train like your everyday person that just works nine to five and that, yep. mate, cause they can stimulate me th- through conversations oh, as well. You absolutely. know what I mean? But yeah, like going back to the high performance person, that really interests me because i I want to know how I can always improve and get to another level, man. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, I, I, they find, I, find, I find it fascinating if people people see the world differently yeah. and, and I always try and, and as part of this podcast, everyone sees it so differently and yeah. co- communicates differently. It's, it's really interesting, but I, I've, I kind of enjoyed that assessment working with high-performance humans and it's not so much about what they've achieved or what they have in the bank. It's actually about like their mindset. Yeah. Like you, and I think you resonate with that. People that have an elite mindset and focus to anything yeah. are always interesting because yeah. they they kind of motivate you. Because right. and like you, you you probably only know one way how to attack things, and that's yeah. like one hundred and fifty percent effort. Yeah. yeah, and that's like or these people no point, as well. You know? And 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 I'm not I'm not there yet. I know I'm not there yet, but I know I know with the way I go about it, with the conversations I have, it's like yeah, I'm on that. I'm on that work ethic level. Mm-hmm. Um, am I on the risk level? I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they, they're always taking risks. And the thing is, the, the one the one thing I learned about working with a lot of high performance like humans, as I say, right, is uh, they're, they're 
their adversity, like they've got like this bubble around them that can just like punch through adversity. Yeah. Mm. Like they can just, they can fight it and they're never down. They might be down for a minute, but then they're, they're right back up on their feet and they're going hard again. It's like, it's almost like they've got a bubble around them. It's not like they're bulletproof. They can get hit. They can, they put down on their knees, but they're up pretty quick. Mm. You know, they don't have time to worry about feeling sorry for themselves. Never too high, never too low no, type, type they're mentality. they're just neutral. Yeah, they're which vanilla. is powerful. Yeah. You just, I guess sometimes that can slow you down when you go too low yeah. or, you know, make you go too quick when you yeah. go too high rather yeah. than on course. Um, so you also one thing is that as part of what you do, you train a lot of um, AFL players yeah. too yeah. and working with them, which yeah. – goes hand in hand obviously you played at quite a high level yeah. as well but I mean you must enjoy that yeah it's what you dream of when you're a kid I guess I guess you go well when, when not when I'm a kid but like when I first got into this mm. you go oh imagine how good would it be to just train AFL players all day once you start training them they're just like everyone else yeah you know so <laughs> uh, I've made some really good relationships with a lot of AFL players and and not just ones that I train face to face I actually don't train as many face to face anymore um, but I work with heaps of them online and uh, they're just. What, what would be like the work you'd be doing with them? All right. So the biggest thing, all right, and this is probably a question you're going to ask me, but <laughs> 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 How, how's the AFL system in regard to strength and conditioning oh, and nutrition? I, well, do you want me to ask that now? Cause I, <laughs> ask that me that question, man. <laughs> yeah, well, no, because I wanted to, I actually was going to, it was on my list. Oh, I think I might have told sorry. you I'm going to ask you this, so maybe come prepared, but um the high performance units of AFLs, Man. like they're, they're externally anyway, they're seen as potentially some of the best yeah. um, because of obviously the how fit you have to be as an AFL football. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's 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 a running that's unique to anything. But yeah. I wanted to ask you, being around the system, the players, having played yourself and now being, you know, quite, um, you know, well certified at least yeah. in this space as a, as a trainer or yeah. a thinker, would you change anything around these high performance units or at least add anything that may not be there? Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Like 99%, I'm going to say 99% of the AFL, lot. <laughs> 99% of AFL players that come to me have no clue on how to fuel their body. No oh, really? clue. And when I ask them the question, it's the same answer. It's we've got a part-time nutritionist and she oh, really? She or he doesn't really give me that advice. They just give us food at the club and and that's it. And I'm like, so you're telling me you've been in the system for six, seven, eight years and you don't have a clue on how to fuel your body? And they're like, no, nah, I don't have a clue. I just eat X, Y, and Z. I'm like, show me what you eat for the day. Give me a daily routine. And I don't know who, whatever viewers are watching here understand macronutrients and, and calorie intake and all of that. But these guys are lucky to get a thousand calories in a day, and they're running like 15, 20 kilometer sessions. So they, do they need way more than that? Way more. Yeah. Way more. Like the average male will burn anywhere from two and a half to three thousand calories a day just at rest, right? So if you're eating a thousand calories a day and you're constantly getting soft tissue injuries, then you wonder why your body's not being fueled. Oh, that's so interesting. Think about the injuries we got as kids. Yeah. Right? Were you fueling your body enough? I was. Oh, man. I, 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 was just quite, ate, I was having cheeseburgers on the way home from games. Man. Mate, I just ate what mum put on the table. <laughs> 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 I was trying to eat well, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was. I didn't know what well eat well was. I thought, you know, eat breakfast, eat lunch, eat dinner. Yes, yeah, sweet. You might get away with that, but when you get to the elite level, nah, man. It's, it's ridiculous, it's man. An, it's, a, it's, a, it's a genuine inch of performance that you mate. can you can get out or lose just by doing it right or wrong. And. and and when I look at their, their, you know, their S and C programs, it's generic across the board. Is it so really? like, I'm, I'm guessing each player that has to go to another level has to outsource someone like myself or, or another coach or something like that. But if you're just going to rely on what's at the footy club, it's, that's just not enough. Does that you though, know? does the relationship say with you cut when the season starts like because yeah. I, I don't see too many I see I more try of the, not to well, I see more of the AFL and trainer relationship outside mm -hmm. of footy clubs in the off seasons yeah. right which I love but you think that would be something that you Good could question that incorporate through the season but I, I, clubs I don't think they like it's that 50 do they? 50 um I still delve heavily in helping with their nutrition in season because it becomes then more apparent like uh. they need to know more about how to ref, you know fuel their body when they're under the most duress, like mm. games, 
you know, right. pre-game, post-game. And, you know, you hear a lot of the time, oh, pre-game I just have a pasta or a carb up the day before. You shouldn't have to carb up if your calories and your carbohydrates are even through the whole week. Yeah. There should be no carb up. There yeah. should be more uh, emphasis on sodium intake and electrolytes and uh, all of that. You shouldn't need to diet as an AFL footballer because you, you should be just neutral all the time. You shouldn't have all these low days and then two days out, oh, I'm going to sp spike my body with carbs. Yeah. Then match day you come in and you feel like a slug. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> I, do you know what? I always thought that was a bit of a myth, eating pasta like the day of a game. I'm like, yeah. bro, that's so heavy. It's only 80 grams of carbs, uh, yeah, man. Like, <laughs> it's like a fucking – I used to eat it and I used to be like, man, I – I don't know if this is like the way to go. Like yeah. some guys would eat like a sandwich or they'd have something light. And I'm like, yeah. I think that probably yeah. is sufficient to kind of run here. You yeah. know what I mean? There's so many elite footballers. Like I'm talking elite footballers that aren't eating properly that don't know because they're just relying on, you know, their natural ability, I guess. So wow. I think we're really far behind in Australia, especially at the elite level when it comes to like nutrition, especially training's a little bit different. We're getting better with it, but I think, um, yeah, Players still have to outsource coaches in the in the off season and in season as well. Players are getting more uh, understanding of that they still need to train and strength train in season as well. Right. Um, so it's it's evolving, but we're behind here in Australia. So what behind. what would be if we could just narrow it down? What would be your number one piece of advice for like AFL footballers, but athletes in general who? Diet, they're a little bit here, there, and everywhere with how they approach it. I'd get not just a nutritionist, get a nutritionist that understands the game you're playing. Yeah. So you can get a nutritionist that hasn't played sport before, but they don't understand your exertion. They, yeah. they, they, they only know what they've studied. Or by the book, yeah. Yeah, what they've so read. get a nutritionist, someone that understands how to make your body perform at a high level through what they've done as mm. well. You know, if they've never played a sport, how are they supposed to know? Yeah. What it feels like. That's a good point. <laughs> I like that. That's probably my biggest head hate. Um, I like it. All right. I wanted to ask actually a little bit about the AFL season. Yeah. Um, you have a gut feel for I feel like it's going to be quite a similar similar ending to last season <sighs> as it is I this year. I feel like Collingwood. I feel like GWS, Brisbane GWS. and Collingwood, like they're all – yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I think I'm not buying into smoking. Carlson. I'm not buying into this Carlson uh, stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a Collingwood man, and I'm not. I'm not one-eyed by all means, but I feel like we could be a dynasty. I oh, feel yeah. like it. I, I just. I feel like that because the competitions that even, like say GW, GWS, look like they're red hot. They look oh. like they're coming. Like they're tough. They're quick. They're young. They're hard. They're young. Collingwood. Hey, correct me if I'm wrong, Braden. Collingwood's old. Is that the oldest in the oldest yeah, team? Yeah, oldest team. Yeah, which is, I mean, look, you got Pendles and and Rusty that kind of stretch it, but it's still like, it's interesting though, done. isn't it? Because like Colling now you got to win. If you if you're the oldest in the comp, they know how to win, but they do. Yeah. But like, I mean, I get, I, know. I assume like players like Jamie Elliott and mm. all these other guys are like on the sort of back stretch now of their career. I feel like Steel we've got Pendles. one more in us, but it has to be within the next two years. You've got a few good young kids coming oh, up at Collingwood. Like seriously, good. some seriously. They need good to blood kids. them though, like Ash Johnson yeah. and stuff. They need to like they need to play a lot. Yeah, just so then when that transition's gone there. I'm I'm very as a Collingwood supporter scared of GWS and ah. they match Collingwood really well. Yeah, um, I think they match Collingwood really well. They play similar, yeah, play similar, similar style too. Really hard, like just forward handballs and hard and tough and quick, and they're just annoying. It's round one of the year, actually. <laughs> it is at Collingwood in at Giant Stadium. I like watching the Giants. They're yeah, actually, I do. I, I, mean, I love, love watching Toby Green. As well. Yeah, yeah. He's, a jet. He's, probably, he's. I'm going to say he's my favourite player in the AFL. Yeah, Maybe he's my favourite player. Yeah, I think I think yeah. he's a lot. A lot yeah, of people's. He's a freak. Um, so, what? Who's your tip then? Who's your Giants? Is your oh, I'm going to get, I'm gonna have to go against Collingwood on this one, but yeah. I'd say if they could do a dynasty, but I'm going to say I'm going to say GWS are looking on the up. Okay, quick, good coach too. Good coach, and he, yeah. he lifts weights. <laughs> <laughs> I seen him at Muscle City. Does he? When he was coaching Richmond, and I had to go over to him, and I was like, dude, like. You're like way bigger in person than like uh, Adam Kingsley. He's an absolute he's unit. A beast. Dude, he's a monster. Which um which players make you want to watch the game? Like which oh. players that make you want to turn TV? I know you said Toby Green, so he scrapped that. But like I always oh. find it interesting people's answers are so different with this. Yeah, I love Bond. I Bond. Love Bond. Oh, I Bond, love Bond. Bond Live is like 
I don't think you realise how good he is until you watch him live. I've, I've ran next to him and it's dirty. Oh, that's really? Just, me and my mate were doing laps at the Widden Oval. Yeah. It was like a horse running past me. Oh, my they were doing 400s. It was just they were in rehab oh, and he was God. just smoking us. Wow. Um, probably Bont and who who else was I going to say? Um, I can't remember now. It just – it. Past my mind. Sorry, I can't. Ooh, that's fine. Bonte, but Bonte, Bonte, obviously, Dacos. Like, oh yeah, for me, Dacos. I love watching Nick Dacos. But I think him and Jordy, they're coming out. Jordan, best Dugowie. one two, one two punch. Going Jordan Dagoe, like, what? yeah, I know, I know, you're tight with him, but he's he's just fuck. Well, dude. I think him and Dacos now the new no, new one two punch in Mitchell. That's next level. I, I yeah, can't the pick. There's five him. there, but Jordan Dagoe for me be right up there. Yeah. <coughs> love that. Love yeah. that. Um, all right, I want to get into. Um, your gym now, yep. where is it? Obviously, as part of your platform that you've built, you're, you're building sort of, um, we touched on it previously, but you're building, you know, a uh, clothing line. Yep. You've got supplements as well, which is almost like uh, you're running a, a full-on business now with yep. a lot of things coming your way and also a lot of effort and time putting putting into it. I mean, how's that all going? Yeah, I'm trying to make it a one-stop shop, obviously, like, so – when when I opened it was supposed to be just a just a PT studio and then it just evolved obviously but um, I feel like you can't just have a gym and just make revenue off the gym and off personal training you got to have all these other elements and, and put yourself out there and I'm just trying to make something that that can last mm. a long time not not just a short time and just get you know quick money and I'm I'm building things and planting seeds so five six seven eight years from now hopefully I can sort of step, step back a little bit more from the business and it, and it just completely runs itself. You know mm. what I mean? So obviously what I'm trying to get into is the business of not having that face to face sort of service. It's yeah. very, that's very emotional. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, 15 years of that can be a bit taxing. Yeah. So building a clothing line, there's no, there's emotion to what I'm feeling when I build it. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a digital engagement in yeah, a sense. So you purchase you know, yeah. and I don't, <laughs> I don't need to really know about your emotions. And mm. and I'm one of those guys that can really, like with my clients, the way I've built my business is I'm really empathetic and I'm, I understand them and we're friends and we become mates, which shouldn't happen, mm. but it's inevitable. It happens because it's how you build trust and that's mm. obviously how I've built my business. But I'm trying to move into the space of getting away from that and obviously supplements, there's no emotion behind that. Yeah. There's no emotion behind clothing. True. Um, it's just build, rinse, repeat, build, rinse, repeat. And that's sort of what I'm trying to do. Um, I'll always be in the space of owning a gym, mm. right? But I don't think you can just purely focus on that. The way this society is now, you need plenty of different going. elements. Yeah, you need you need yeah. three or four or five different Lines of income coming in. You yeah. Know, so, yeah, the gyms yeah. now are crazy. What's like some of them? Yeah. I mean, there's people have retreats in Bali, there's yeah. boxing nights, there's run You've got clubs, to stand there's out, this yeah. and that. Yeah. It's, I, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely changed a lot very quickly. Yeah. I feel. You which just, makes it compare. I've never really thought of it from a gym owner perspective, but you got to be quite agile, don't you? You do. You and, and when, when you say agile, you mean in the space yeah, of being like competitive, making quick decisions of 100%. like keeping keeping ahead of the, your competitors. One hundred percent. Like if I try to think like that, we don't have competitors, but we do. The only reason why I don't think we have a competitor is because we're really niche in what we do. Mm. But then the next competitor will say the same thing. He'll say we're niche. We're different. Right, yeah. and why are you different? So I think why we're different is we're building, like we're building a huge community. Communities yeah. for me is, is way more important right now than the money coming in. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously you need to pay the bills, but like the community that we're building, it's, it's, it's man, it's getting towards two, 3,000 strong. Wow. You know, so it's starting to build its trajectory the last three or four months has been where I've seen it the most. Yeah. Someone asked me the question today, I, I signed up a member and I'm still doing sign ups. Like I'm still very hands on with oh, it. Oh wow, that's cool. But um, yeah, she was like, I've noticed your business take like bit of a you know really good spike the last few months. When when did you feel it happened? And pretty much literally the last few months, I reckon we grinded like the first eight, ten, probably twelve months. We're we're right on our twelve month anniversary. I reckon it's been the last three months I've really seen like massive trajectory. Right. Uh, yeah, and just, just because I think all the other little elements that we're building around, 
the gym uh, under helping. the same banner of Be Elite. Yeah. That's and, really good. Yeah. So, yeah. What's what um for for some of our listeners at home because we've all kind of drawn on and everyone has these um yearly aspirations or New Year's resolutions. They're going to get fit, and then Feb comes, and people are like, "Yeah, oh, shit, fuck that." <laughs> um, but for you, what what's some what's going to help someone get in the gym? Like, what's some advice that you can give to some people out there that may be flirting with the gym or flirting yeah. with fitness but haven't committed yet? Yeah. Like, how can you how can you give give them some inspiration? They just got to dive in and and look. This is a plug for our hundred day challenge. Uh, hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we've, got us, we've got us starting next week. Um, but yeah, you got to think about it like this. You do a hundred days of anything, and then it just becomes a part of your life. You mm-hmm. do a hundred days, and I've been rambling on about this the last two or three weeks on my socials. But you do a hundred days of something that you can accomplish and you just feel like you can accomplish anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to the gym for a hundred days, you're like, well, I'm going to keep going to the gym now. You read a book for a hundred days, it's just going to become a habit. <coughs> Spot on. So uh, it's the same thing with our hundred day challenge. Everyone's asking, why are we doing it for a hundred days? Isn't that too long? It's like everyone wants the quick six or eight weeks. So you're going to do eight weeks and then after eight weeks, you're just going to throw in the towel. Oh, I did my eight weeks. So we're trying to implement elite mentality of 100 days sets you up for success. Oh, you know? so, so what did, wait, what is it? Is it just a hundred days of doing a workout? Whichever, yeah, that, that's probably one that that's going to be checked off, but um, it's a hundred days of whatever your goal is. So everyone associates right. a challenge with a weight loss sort of challenge, but we're not that type of gym. We're we're, a ch- we're whenever we throw out a challenge or 12 week or something like that, it's all about how good you can get your body composition. So yeah. you might be a real skinny ectomorph body type, someone that struggles to put muscle or weight on, and you might put three or four kilos of lean muscle on, which is pretty hard to do. But let's say you do that over, you know, 12 weeks, and then you've got someone that's dropped 20 kilos. That guy that's put four kilos of muscle on his body composition is going to look more like drastic. I feel than right. the person that just lost 20 kilos of water and a little bit of fat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that guy could win. Right. They're oh, like, so it, okay. That's it's not interesting. About weight loss. Yeah. We're not about that because we're not, we're not like those, you know, you come in, you get your sweat and you go home type of gym. So like mm. we're very niche in, we want to teach you how to build proper lean muscle tissue. We want to, teach you how to actually lift correctly, proper form and eat correctly and mm. make it a lifestyle. Like a lifestyle decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. That's a good one. I so like that. That's what our 100 days is all about. It sets you up for success, not just in the gym but in your life, you know, yeah. so, yeah. Do you, do you draw anyone, draw inspiration from anyone in business or in your space particularly that um, you kind of at least have an eye on what they're doing or are you kind of pretty tunnel visioned on yourself and what's going on in your world? I like world? that whole Mosey dude. Alex, oh yeah, Alex. my friend, uh, my mate, Rashid loves him too. I've never really uh, what what is stuff does he? It resonates with me because of where he started as a PT, right? And then um, look, I haven't looked too much into what he does, but I've really been watching his stuff lately. Um, maybe the last like three or four weeks, if I get a minute to watch something. Um, but yeah, look, I, I got to be honest with you, man. I stay in my lane. I just yeah. worry about what I'm doing. Um, I'd love to be able to watch a bit more of what other people are doing, but I, I'm, I honestly don't give myself the time, time to do it. I'm, yeah. Sometimes tunnel vision's no good as well. Yeah. Like I'm full tunnel vision and I don't look left or right and mm. that can be a bad thing sometimes as well because you're not, you're not quite aware of what's around you. So I've got to get a little bit better with that, but I'm um, just doing my thing, man. But if I had to say – who it would be him? Yeah, he's yeah. he's. I think he's almost a billionaire. Man. Wow, no doubt. Yeah, I've, I've heard of him before. He's a, he puts out like heaps of inspiring or yeah. quiet thought thought provoking yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, he's cool. I yeah, yeah. Well, mate, you're like a king of building it. I think building a brand, bro. The the stuff yeah. you've done on social media and then how you've intertwined it into a space you're naturally always into, into fitness, into your gym. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty unique. It's yeah. definitely a story I wanted to to share on this platform. Um. I mean, probably in your eyes, just what was like, what's been the number one thing to building a brand for you, or at least attaching that to yourself as well? Yeah, believing in yourself, man. Yeah. Just believing in what, what goes on in here. You know, so a lot of people have thoughts, but then they don't execute them because they're scared. Yeah. You know, so I think if you back yourself and you believe in your ability to succeed in what's going on in here, then do it, go for it. You got nothing to lose. Like, you're not. You're not on this life 
or in on this earth for too long. Mm. So if you fuck it up, who cares? Yeah. You get I like what I mean? That. Really, you you can restart again. And we think that time always gets us, but time is inevitable. Like we're trying to I think most of us are trying to make as much time as possible for ourselves as mm. we can. That to me is success. Mm. But just just go for it, man. Don't but just back yourself in. That's it. And if you don't, you're gonna live with a lot of regret, I guess. So for me, I'm big on just believing in my own ability. I guess. Uh, love That's that. It. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So where can um where can these guys find some of your products online before we ask the sort of final yeah. questions? <laughs> Website launches on It'll Saturday. be out probably by the time this comes yeah, out. 100%. So, so, so yeah, Saturday we'll, the we'll second. Plug, we'll plug the link in the, in the bio. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll this Saturday, that. yeah, we dropped this. So we dropped these um, three-way colour tees, some awesome. mesh shorts. Uh, then we've got, you know, a legacy line, which is all active wear, which yeah. for men and women. Um, so it's a big drop, this one. I'll never drop this amount of clothing ever again. Like it's right. too many different lines. But, <laughs> so imagine the work that went into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, they can jump on, I think it's www beeliteapparel.com.au. We'll, plug, we'll plug the link in. I'll yeah. get it off you. Yeah, for sure. easy. But uh, no, I appreciate you having me on. Well, here, yeah, but, mate, appreciate you coming on. You, I don't know if you – probably our final question, which we always ask, resilience, driver, ambition. Um, it, we attest those three traits to successful people, sport or business. Yeah. Obviously all are important, but which one for you has been critical to obviously bouncing back from the footy journey and succeeding into the fitness journey? Ooh. Damn. So driver ambition. And resili no, resilience as well. Oh, resilience, man. Yeah, resilience. Yeah, straight up. Be, straight up. You're running me. three hours a day. It's yeah. pretty fucking resilient. <laughs> you <laughs> need that, man. Yeah. I guess I guess ambition's going to be there, but if you don't execute it, yeah. you don't have res the resilience to push through the hard shit, to be ambitious. Yes, it's a good question, bro. Make That's a go. trick question, bro. That's why we ask it. <laughs> hey, wait, I got one for you. I got yeah. one for you. I love asking people this. I'll ask you before we go. Are you a person? This is this teaches us a little bit about who you are, right? right. Are you someone that completes? Say, if you, you've got ten tasks. Are you someone that completes ten tasks at eighty percent, or three tasks at a hundred? Um. Probably three to a hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I don't, no, I just, don't, and yeah, because I, I, too many times, ADHD, man. Yeah. I'm like, so you're just straight. Yeah. <laughs> Bang. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like a 10 at 80. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm that's what, I don't know which one, which one, I don't know for my lifestyle, which one would be better. I think I probably, don't know you enough I to think be probably able to 10 say. at 80 is probably better for me because I'm doing so many things. You're a 10 at 80. Yeah. Yeah. But your podcast is like, hundred percent. But like you've got to be a hundred percent at this. Yeah. I, I don't but, know. But I feel like your podcast is a hundred percent. Like it's yeah. elite. Yeah. Yeah. So well, like, well, yeah, we've got a team though. Luckily, <laughs> Look so. at this man. It's yeah. killer. <laughs> oh, I yeah, appreciate yeah. you coming on, bro. Yeah, um, all the best with everything. Good luck with the drop. Appreciate it. Um, and we'll definitely be keeping an eye on your journey, bro, as it keeps going. Thank so you, appreciate bro. it, bro. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. everyone for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.